Hi everybody, it's Az here from Heel vs Babyface. Now apologies for the delay on my video for Shadow Pan Monastery. I have been threatened with <laughs> sticks with nails to get this out. And the reason why it's a little bit late is Captain Genius here decided to clear some space in his fraps file and unfortunately deleted the footage of the two runs that I'd done previously, which I was working which one I was going to do the voiceover for. So sorry about that. On the plus side, in refilming it, I've respect to Affliction. So Warlocks can have a wee look at the Affliction lock. And I've managed to transmog my gear to my Molten Core gear because it looked brilliant. And now I can bring Demonic Gateway in. Yeah, and the crowd go wild. Demonic Gateway is just useless in PvE. It really, really is. I've been playing with it now for two days. I've done dungeons. I've done quests. I've done this, that, and the other. And it just serves no purpose whatsoever. Before all the haters jump on my back, I haven't done any PvP with it. And I promise you I will. So I'll give you an assessment of how it operates in PvP. But for PvE, it's really doing nothing at the moment whatsoever. In actual fact... Some poor bugger walks into it before he gets to the first boss and it bounces him back to the beginning of the instance. And that's about as much fun as we get out of this spell. Anyway, the video itself is going to show you the Shadow Pan Monastery. So let's concentrate a little bit more on that and I can waffle on about a warlock a little later. So we start off by this little burst of trash and then we're straight away into the first boss, which is quite nice. And this boss is called Glue Cloud Strike. Now, Cloud Strike is quite a tricky little boss. I fought him three times and all three fights have been pretty tough. So I'm glad to see these definitely stepped up the level of uh, intensity and difficulty with these bosses in the dungeons. Now I am struggling slightly with the affliction rotation. It's a bit disjointed to say the least because you have to use both Malefic Grasp to increase the dot ticking and drain soul to make sure that you don't run out of soul shards because you really do need to keep haunt up as much as possible because it increases your damage by 40% for 8 seconds so it's almost a vital spell now he just throws these lightning balls on the floor and they cra uh, cause a splash of AoE damage it's nothing dramatic but when he gets down to about 40-45% to 45%, he brings in the Observe Serpent now the Observe Serpent likes to play with the melees more but it casts a spell on absolutely everybody and it's this little bubble here called magnetic shroud now when it forms you all need to group up on each other which is not happening in this run it's very very disjointed but when you all group up then it bursts and you get a heal out of it if you don't group up it stays on you and starts to tick for damage so again he throws out these lightning balls just be aware of where they are and move out the way it's nothing dramatic and once the observed serpent's been burnt down then goo comes back into the fight in the second phase or the third phase really and things get a little bit tricky because now he starts throwing this chain lightning all over the place and it really hurts and not only does it really hurt but it ticks quicker and quicker and quicker the more health he loses so the closer to death he is the quicker it's ticking as you can probably get an idea from the damage which i'm taking now and we are taking storming damage the tanks uh, the sorry the healer's gone and we're all just about ready to drop and thankfully we have managed to kill the boss before it has now we have a little bit of loot, so as ever, I've flashed it up. If you want to just pause the video so you can have a look at the stats in a little bit more detail, please do. But I've decided to do the rest of the video as destruction because the affliction rotation really was messy. It was like putting up Doom, and then you have to put up Agony, and then you have to put UA up, then you use your Haunt, then you use Mal uh, Malefic Grasp, and then you have to try and get your Soul Shards back, or proc a, a Nightfall to get a Soul Shard. It, it just becomes very, very convoluted to try and do short bursts of trash and bosses. Destruction is far more fluid. It's, in my opinion anyway, the most fluid of the Warlock rotations so far. So the first boss is down. Yay. And then we have a short burst of trash, which takes us through to the next area. Now, one thing that some keen viewers that have seen my videos before will definitely have noticed is when I fire off a Chaos Bolt, as I'm just about to do now, it does significantly less damage. Now, if you saw what kind of damage I was doing in the uh, 
Palace, the Mogsrushan Palace, I was critting for around 136k. Now, yesterday there was a patch applied to the beta servers which reduced the benefit that Warlocks get from its passive mastery by 75%, which is a huge, huge nerf. So suddenly, these Chaos Bolts, which are critting for 136k, are now critting for 77k. Now, the reason why I'm sort of concerned about this is because, all right, fair enough, they, I must confess, the Destruction of Warlock did feel pretty overpowered. Um, and was most likely due a little bit of a nerf, and that I can hold my hands up to. However, with the way that you're using your Conflagrate, and then having the quick incinerate spells, which are going at 0.8 seconds afterwards, when they're critting, they're still critting for 46-odd K. You're doing more damage by using a Conflagrate followed by incinerate spells than you are by wasting 3.5 seconds, 4 seconds, too far off a Chaos Bolt. So it's almost removing the Chaos Bolt from a Burning Ember. And instead, I think I only use a few more in the rest of the whole fight. I try now to use Fire and Brimstone to burn off AoE Incinerates. Instead, it just works far, far better. Now, the second boss has been initiated. And this is a cracking little fight. I have to say, it's thoroughly enjoyable. Because you get two stages before you even get to the boss. The first stage is you have to fight 24 of these novices. And you don't kill them. You just burn them down to about 1% and then they turn friendly and they take their seats back. But there is 24 of them and they just keep coming. They burn down really quick. They're not difficult and they don't hit particularly hard. Look, I've had this one on me for a little while now. I'm taking virtually no damage and I can just go toe-to-toe -to -toe with it. But it's still a fun mechanic. Now, once these novices have been taken care of, the boss then decides to throw in his two best apprentices. Now, they're not difficult again. It's more the actual aspect of the fight, which is pretty cool. One does a whirlwind kick. One does it like a fixate there where they come after you. But apart from that, they burn down relatively quickly. Now, on a heroic, I would like to see a lot more brought into this fight because it could be tricky and could be a lot more fun. It is a little bit face roll for this sort of dungeon, considering how difficult the first boss was. However, when we get to the proper boss, because remember, this is just instigating the, the main boss fight, we suddenly get into a different case of a boss, and, and it does become quite an interesting fight. But the only problem is you never seem in trouble. In the first boss, you saw yourself in trouble. This boss, it's long... But you don't. Now then, Demonic Gateway Ahoy! I'm, I'm still not getting a reaction from the crowd. Yeah, look, I'm just trying to do things with it. I really am. But pff, it's, you know, whatever. I try, I try, I try. Now, Master Snowdrift is, bless his little heart, not that difficult, like I said. It's more an aspect of just learning the mechanics of the fight. He starts off and it just becomes a bit of a DPS. He does do this really quick fist punch. And even as a tank, if you stand and absorb that at the minute, you're going to die. He's going to kill you. So when he starts doing his quick fists, tank, move out of the way. Just let the healer heal you up. Move out of the way. He won't follow you. He'll just stand there punching away. You just get on with your job. Move out of the way. Once he's stopped, get back in. And then when he goes down to about 50%, he starts doing this next mechanic. Way I use the gateway for, for no reason whatsoever, apart from to try and use it. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'll stop hating on the gateway. Okay, I promise you. I promise you. Now, the next phase, he spawns these three adds and himself, or two adds and himself, three in total. Two of them are shadows. One of them is him. If you hit the shadow, it will pretty much die straight away. So if you identify which one's the shadow, it will knock them dead and he'll be the only one left and you can engage him. Or if you find him out of the three, you can just keep DPSing him. However, the shadows will fire these like ice balls at you and you can take some damage for it. But it's a relatively fun fight if they probably increased the difficulty level of it, made him hit harder, made the shadows do something a little bit more than just fire these pretty weak shadow bolts, uh, ice bolts. But it does look like it could be a fun fight on Heroic again if they switch things up. Now, between the second boss and the third boss, which is the final boss, 
we are going to go through a mountain of trash and a mini boss. Now, the reason why I say a mini boss is because the loot it's dropping at the moment is the same level of loot that is dropping from the Temple of the Jade Serpent. It's 410. Whereas the other gear that's dropping from this dungeon, I believe, is either 435 or 4... Yeah, 435. And then Mogshu Palace is now dropping level 450 gear. So I might go back into there and have a bit of a think, because apparently there's a really nice Warlock Dagger in there. Yum, 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 yum. But we get masses and masses of trash now, which is possibly a little bit annoying and unnecessary. However... I have stressed this before. The aesthetic of this place is great. And you have to be careful with these groups because pulling one group is fine. But if you pull two together, which I had done in a previous run, we wiped. And it because it just got a wee bit too difficult. We had these two groups and then we had the archers above firing down these arrows, which are going to hurt you as well as the mob. So you have to be very careful indeed. So... Unnecessary trash? Uh, okay, maybe when they start dropping items, you know, there could be some nice little BOEs in here. But until they do, it just feels a bit unnecessary for the beta so far. But it's all got to be tested, and that is what we're here to do. So, I'll just suck it up and do it. Okay, so why I'm going on a little bit about the trash is both the new dungeons, which were introduced to the latest patch have a common flaw and the common flaw is they both get to a point in the dungeon where they lose fluidity completely they lose direction in the case of this dungeon it's after the second boss we've had a short burst of trash first boss we've had a short burst of trash second boss and then we have a mountain of trash which is only intervened by a tiny little mini boss before we get to the final boss. So suddenly it's taken us 10 to 15 minutes to kill the first two bosses and then we have to spend the next 20 to 30 minutes to get to the final boss. That's a huge, huge drop in Fluidity Blizzard. It's not fun to kill 25 minutes worth of trash to get to a boss. It really isn't. Something's got to be introduced to break that up. An event, just something. Turn this into a gauntlet. Turn this into something that is actually going to challenge the people apart from just bunching up groups of trash. Now, with the Mogushan Palace, it was the same after the first event. You had the three warlords fight you one at a time, and then after you fought them, everybody in the room came in for a mass brawl. But it didn't give you any indication of where to go. There was an exit at the end of the room that was barred by a big plume of smoke. It seemed like that was the exit. So you tried to kill everything in the room and nothing happened. But what it, you really had to do was just go down a flight of stairs that was pretty much hidden at the other way. None of the bosses, none of the trash, nothing gave you any hint or clue that that's where you're meant to go. So both these dungeons lose fluidity and that's something that the first two dungeons have suffered nothing from whatsoever they flowed fantastically the storm stout was a relatively short burst but it was burst of trash boss burst of trash boss burst of trash boss so something's got to be looked at in my opinion here we are then at the mini boss which looks like the set from the original superman film look at that some kryptonian prison has been held in there you will kneel before zod well i wish i was because to be honest with you what i've got instead is this little mini lord morigar version and it's just a boring boring mini boss there's nothing difficult about this fight at all he throws up a little earthen spike which all it does is a tiny bit of damage and annoys the crap out of you when he's trying to spell cast because it interrupts and then anyone that's in a melee range he does this little spinning attack and it doesn't seem to hurt anybody at all the heal is in no difficulty dps are in no difficulty tanks in no difficulty and it's just a waste of time so i think blizzard have put this in to to try and break up the dungeon um but that's not done anything whatsoever the dungeon has now completely lost that fluid motion that it had before and it drops level 410 gear the rest of the bosses have dropped level 435 gear so we've got suddenly jade serpent level gear there's no point to that you did that dungeon when you were level 85 Whew. so here we go on to the next trash and the next lot of trash, just to compound matters, you have to kill it all. 
you can't skip it. Now, there's a reason for that. If you don't cleanse these spirits, then they just keep forming. The mobs will just keep respawning. So you have to cleanse the mobs to stop them from respawning, and you have to kill those hateful orbs to stop the trash from respawning. If you don't, they will just keep coming and coming and coming. And the second run that I did of this dungeon, the tank got bored and just wanted to plow through to the boss and it ended up that we ended up wiping or the majority of people ended up getting killed because it just spawned so many ads we were overwhelmed so you have to take the time to burn the orbs down and cleanse these pandas here an annoying factor just to compound matters is this hateful spirit here does this whirlwind of shadow bolts which will interrupt the cleansing process so they have to be burnt down before the monk can be cleansed. So, oh, by the time I got here, I was ready to start loving the demonic gateway and try and portal it over to the other side of the bridge. But there was just another bunch of trash there. So there's nothing that we can really do. Now, I'm not hating on what the trash does per se, because I think the mechanic of the trash is interesting that you have to kill the orbs to stop the respawns you have to cleanse something and you have to kill the ads i've got no problem with that whatsoever i just got a problem with the fluidity of it and the density of it there's no necessity to have so much uh like i said going from second boss to third boss you're talking 20 to 25 minutes and no 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 please no right i think i've made myself clear on that so this is the final lot of trash until we get to the bridge <laughs> and then after the bridge we have the ultimate final bunch of trash where after we've killed that we can then tackle the boss himself now the final boss fight is easy but the saving grace is it's fun and and i think that is a very important thing when it comes to fights if the fights are going to be relatively easy at least make them fun because if you don't do certain things in the fight then you will be in trouble so if you follow what you're meant to do things will go fine things will go swimmingly it's like when we cc the trash in the palace for the third second or the third boss fight because we cc the trash so well it was a very easy fight if we hadn't cc the trash it would have been a completely different kettle of fish but moving on so what happens is you start to generate hate and you will get a bar which will start filling up from the start of the fight but first ladies and gentlemen let me cast demonic gateway okay i promise i won't take the piss out of it anymore i promise so anyway once you start the fight you will have a hate bar that will slowly start to fill and you will have a button underneath that hate bar. And I will show you once the fight starts. Now, if you've done Raid Finder, and especially if you've done the Ultraxian fight, you'll have no idea what that button does. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I, couldn't really, I really could not resist that. What happens is that button will make you meditate and it will cleanse you of the hate. And another mechanic is these gripping hatred orbs, which the boss fires into the fight as well. They will drag you to them, and they will greatly increase your level of hatred. So don't wait too long before you start to meditate and cleanse yourself. Get yourself to about 50 to 60%, and then meditate. Because if you're grabbed and it goes in, your hate will go off the roof. Now, if you get full hate, your damage will be reduced by 90%, and your healing will be reduced by 25%. So don't get full hatred. Burn down the orbs. I'm the only one doing it. If you don't, he will keep spawning and there will spawn multiple ones. And he'll basically get to the point where it just grips you from one to the other. And you will easily fill up with hatred. So just get on top of things and the fight will be easy. So we kill the boss. Unfortunately, he needs to stay alive to complete the quest that we got at the beginning of the dungeon. So they have to fix that. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please do like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I will leave Demonic Gateway alone, I promise, until I find a good use for it. Take care, everybody, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.